KHQA this morning. It's your news now. Gary is out live in Quincy this morning. Kristen, what are you up to? Good morning. I am here at Crazy Cakes in Quincy, and we are talking Cake of Palooza. It benefits the local organization YWCA. And coming up after the break, we are going to dive into some cake baking and hear all about the event that is being held this weekend. You're watching KHQA this morning. Kristen Aguirre is out and about in Quincy this morning with some cakes. Kristen, what are you up to? Good morning. We are here in the Crazy Cakes Bakery, and we are talking Cake of Palooza, an event that is happening this weekend, and it benefits the YWCA. With me now is Mary Muhlenfeld, who is the executive director over there. What, uh, for people who don't know, can you explain a little bit about what YWCA is? Uh, well, we're the Young Women's Christian Association, and we've been around Quincy since 1905. The organization is 155 years old. Um, but what we do is um, we empower women and we uh, do programs to eliminate race, racism. And uh, the main way that we empower girls and women is through our supportive housing program and our program called A Girl Like Me. Mm -hmm. And so you have some, some great programs that go on within the community. What made you guys think of Cake of Palooza as, as a great fundraiser for it? Uh, well, yeah, number one, it is a fundraiser. But uh, we just had some really creative board members that um, their hobby was cake decorating. And just through networking, we discovered there are dozens of people in the community that have a really creative side, and they're willing to donate their time and their money to help us raise funds. And so we have dozens of people that help with this. And this is the second year that this is being held, correct? Third. third. Ooh, third, third. year. Yeah, and and year's bigger and better. <laughs> we're looking to get a little bit more competitive this year, right? Oh, yes. It is tight competition this year. Mm -hmm. It is, which I'm sure you're going to talk about here in a little bit. Yeah, we are. <laughs> well, coming up later in the show, we're going to get a sneak peek at some of the competitors that are going to be in Cake Up Palooza this weekend, and we'll hear how you can come and check it out, too. So competitive that uh, Tegan and I will not be competing this year. We didn't meet all of the requirements uh, the past two years that we did it, but it's all in good fun. Now, see this morning, she's making some cakes for Cake of Palooza. How's it going, Kristen? Good morning. Well, this weekend it's Cake of Palooza, and it's at the Quincy Mall, and it's being held this Saturday, and it's an extreme cake decorating competition, and is all benefiting the YWCA. With me now is one of the competitors, Amarlyn Martin. Mm -hmm. Now, what are what is your mindset going into this big competition? Um, you know, my mindset is always just whatever happens, happens. Uh, it's meant to be kind of thing, but I don't know. I have a ton of fun when I go do it. Um, the last time I did it, I didn't actually have a bakery yet. It was in the making. So um, for us to be able to have the experience over the past year, we were told, I believe we did 395 cakes last year. So that was in our first year. Um, so we've gotten lots of practice, which is really great. Um, so hopefully we'll bring something to the competition that we did last year. And you guys won last year, right? We actually got second. The people who won, I believe, are from Durham, Missouri. They did a really good job. They had a lot of detail. They had a little old couple sitting on a bench. Um, I, remember that, yeah. I did kind of an Eiffel Tower sitting on top of uh, wine goblets and stuff. So so you guys have some background, not only in already you have an insight as to what the competition is like, but you have Crazy Cakes Bakery here. Mm -hmm. So um, what are you hoping to happen at, at the competition this weekend? Um, I'm actually, I'm interested in seeing what other people's um, ways of doing things are. I mean, I probably will not have any time at all to even look up from my stuff mm -hmm. to look at theirs, but you know, I hope I do. Um, I want to be able to find out what they do differently that might help us do something better than we already do. Um, otherwise, if somebody doesn't know something like my big thing, I didn't know how to do uh, the, the fondant and stop getting it dry. We used powdered sugar. I learned from somebody else to use cornstarch. So oh. cornstarch is wonderful for fondant. Uh, powdered sugar is not. <laughs> so it's little things like that that we might not know about. I didn't go to school for this, mm -hmm. but you know what? Uh, everybody learns from experience more than anything. So, so definitely looking for a learning experience from this competition. But Amber is not the only one from Crazy Cakes entering in Cake of Palooza. Coming up after the break, we'll hear about from her competitor. Ooh, and I know who it is, and it's uh, <laughs> things are going to get heated there at Crazy Cakes. <laughs> All right, they arrive in Quincy this morning, a little bit closer to the river. How's it going, Kristen? Good morning. I'm here at Crazy Cakes, and we are in the kitchen getting started on some cake decorating. They also have some oldies plans, like a dance party back here. I don't really get any work done. With me now is Jill Thomas, who is the second competitor, or the second one on the second team competing from Crazy Cakes. Why did you guys decide to get into this and go against 
some of your coworkers? Um, I think it's actually really fun because we sit here and Billy and I, uh, we kind of like do all the business end of the bakery and we sit here and we get to watch, you know, them create like really awesome cakes and we tease them, we tease them and we're like, you know, we could do that. And so when, you know, Amber was contacted about being in the Cake of Palooza, Billy and I were like, I think we should do it. It'll be fine. It's for a good cause. And we have so much teasing each other at work anyway, so let's get in it. So we're just kind of like the fly by our seat of our pants technique and just just try and have a lot of fun. So you guys are now stepping up to all the all the making fun of you do to them. They're stepping up to the plate and showing them you can do it. And that for you can do it. And for people who don't know, Billy is actually Amber's husband. Yeah. So it's wife against husband. So who will win? You better check out Cake of Palooza on Saturday. That benefits the YWCA. Um, and for more information, you can always visit our website, connecttristates.com. And coming up later in the show, they are going to give me a sneak peek at what they're actually doing for their cake decorating. And I I believe it has something to do with Snow White. It should be very interesting, especially husband against wife. Thanks, Kristen. Turn we'll things over to Kristen Aguirre, who's making some cakes this morning for Cake of Palooza. How's it going? Good morning. We are here at Crazy Cakes, and we are diving into some cake decorating for Cake of Palooza. It's being held this Saturday, benefiting the YWCA. With me now is Amber, who is one of the competitors. What do we have going on here? Um, this is one of our uh, cakes that's actually due this um, Friday. It's a three-tier. It's going to have some pink camo on it and some deer antlers coming out of the top. So. Ooh, cool. <laughs> but this is kind of an idea of kind of the cake process that will mm -hmm. be going on at Cake of Palooza. Absolutely. Um, this is kind of the... Uh, this is the middle area. You have to first, you know, buttercream your cakes, put them together, then cover them, dowel them so they don't sink in on each other, and then actually go to town on the decorating. So. What are the requirements for Cake of Palooza? Oh, lots of stuff. Um, besides the health department area where you have to make sure everything is clean and sanitary, which mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, goes without saying. Um, but you can't do dummy cakes. You can do... Uh, you, they prefer things that are only edible, um, so using like you know a piece of styrofoam in here is not completely not allowed. Um, we use I don't know a lot of the requirements. I remember them from last year. Height? Oh yeah, yeah. The height. Uh, it can't be more than like 36 wide, and it has to be at least 36 tall. So it has to be really, really tall cake. Um, last year, the winner actually, um, I remember they used a light post, and that was one of their extreme elements as well. So they kind of killed two birds with one stone. Um, we're just hoping ours is going to be tall enough. We haven't actually measured it. So, you know, that's uh, kind of part of the competition. Well, there is another competitor here in the kitchen with us this morning, and that is Jill, who is also part of Crazy Cakes. And she's actually working on, are you work, Jill's working on what she's going to be doing Saturday? Um, unfortunately, I was able to hold Doc here from Snow White, and I severed his arm, but we were able to put it back together. <laughs> so what, what are you working on? Um, I don't want to give too much away, but obviously there's a little bit of Snow White, and uh, so I'm working on Snow White over here. Just got to wait for her face to dry a little bit, paint on some little accents, but that's what I'm working on today. These look amazing. This is pure art. What kind of techniques go into kind of creating this? It looks like a, like, it looks like it's porcelain. Honestly, I have, I have no technique whatsoever. <laughs> I, um, I, I really just throw things together. I like to look on Google and find pictures and just kind of like create things that I see from from the picture. Well, coming up later in the show, they're going to help. I'm going to help them maybe create a little bit of something, but I should probably stay away from Doc because I don't want to sever another another body part. So coming up later in the show, we're going to continue to dive into some cake decorating and show you a little sneak peek of what you can expect at Cake of Palooza this Saturday. I hope she doesn't plan on touching anything that they're going to be using on Saturday, but best of luck to you, Kristen. I'm sure what you make will be absolutely beautiful. Hey, well, out in Quincy this morning, she's baking some cakes and decorating them. How's it going, Kristen? Good morning. Well, I'm here hanging out with some competitors for this weekend's Cake of Palooza that is starting on Saturday, and we are getting into some of the techniques that will be used at the competition. Look at how beautiful this rose is. Can you believe this is edible? I can't believe it. So I'm going to learn how to make this. I highly doubt mine will look like that, but we're learning. So, Amber, what do we have going on here? Okay, so what you do is you start with a cone, just like uh, the middle of the bud of the rose, and then you're basically going to make your rose bloom as big as you want it to. Um, what I did is I just took a circle cookie cutter, 
put it on a very, very thin layer of fondant, um, and then you take the edges of it. I'll start with this one, actually. Uh, you take the edges of it with your tool and just kind of push it down, and it starts kind of getting really thin and taking a shape of kind of a very thin flower petal on the top of it. And then once you have that down, sorry, go fast here. Uh, once you have that down, put a little gum glue on here. Gum glue is also edible. It is. Glue sounds bad to eat, but promise this is actually, it's pretty good. Um, so then you just take this, start at the bottom and round it around there. Put it in more of a cone shape, like a funnel, which looks really silly right now. But the more that you take them um, and layer it around there, you can make your rows as big or small as you want. And you just keep going around and you can fan them out. You can make any color you want. You can take some luster dust and actually dust the edges of the petal to make them pretty, kind of like this one's mm -hmm. got some pink in there in the middle. And eventually, this turns into this or even larger. This is definitely art. Now we're going to walk over to Amber and our, um, Jill and see what she's got going on over here. The, Jill, this year's theme is what for Cakeapalooza? Um, I believe it's Happily Ever After. Happily Ever After. So, yeah, we're just trying to take a bunch of fairy tales and just take a lot of happy late ever ever stories and kind of like intertwine them into one mm -hmm. so what are you are you still working on your I'm characters here snow white i'm gonna kind of do her whole body and so we've got her head a little bit of her bodice and then this will oh. go up here to be her dress and then we'll just kind of build her out from there so is this how doc started off and in, in, in a little guy you know, like this i didn't put him on a stick i just kind of built him from mm -hmm. the bottom up start with the legs and then put a body and then arms and then head and thank god that arm's still back out. Yeah, thank, thank goodness we were able to get Doc's severed arm that I accidentally cut off back onto him. Otherwise, Jill said she would have had to rethink her entire her entire theme of her cake. We were uh, going to go to Shrek. We were going to have to move to Shrek instead of fairy tales. Can't believe I almost destroyed a cake -a palooza dream. Well, for more details on all of these uh, cake -a palooza uh, stuff that we're talking about this morning, you can visit our website at connecttristates.com. And don't forget to take out, take, hello, take a look at cake -a palooza that is this Saturday at the Quincy Mall, and you will be able to get a sneak peek of all of this art. Just crushing dreams this morning, Kristen. That's all you're doing. Let's check in with Kristen Aguirre now, who's live in Quincy this morning, having a dance party and making cakes. Morning. We'll be have been having a blast here at Crazy Cakes, getting prepared for Cake Palooza. But even with all the fun going on, all of this is benefiting a great cause, which is the YWCA. With me now is Mary Mielenfeld, who's executive director there. Um, for people who don't know, who, what is the YWCA? Uh, well, we are a women's organization, and our mission is eliminating racism and empowering women. And we do that through the programs that we have here in Quincy. And so this year, they are taking on Cake Palooza for the third year in a row. But this year, we are stepping it up a notch. It is more competitive. And so what are, what are the details that bakers need to know before they go into this? Well, it is quite different this year. Um, as, as you said, we did step it up a notch. It's, it's more on the professional level. So all the teams that are competing live are professional bakers. Um, in the past, we ha had some amateurs from KHQA come in, and they did a phenomenal job, and they were very entertaining, but this year it is all professional bakers. And in the past, we had several different cake divisions that were judged. This year, it's just professionals again. So we have about 20 cakes that are pre-decorated, and they'll be on display at the mall, and they're going to be judged and giving out prizes for first, second, and third in that. Um, also new this year is Taste of the Tri-States, and we're going to be set up in the storefront down by Penny's, and uh, we have eight vendors. Again, they're professional bakers in the community. They're setting up a table. We have, like, Starbucks, County Market, um, several others that, and you buy a ticket, you go through, and you get to sample their goodies, and, you know, it's a donation for a good cause. And then back again this year is uh, our Gourmet Cupcake Stand. We sold out of these in the first two hours last year. It, we just couldn't believe how well they went over. And we've already got people calling trying to pre-buy cupcakes. And this, again, are just people in the community that love to bake. And, you know, there are these huge jumbo gourmet cupcakes that they're actually uh, custom wrapped. And so they could be a gift or you could just eat them at the mall, whatever you want to do. But we have those set up um, down by Maurice's and then down by Penny's. There's two cupcake stands. So we doubled our capacity this year 
for the gourmet cupcakes um, and hoping that we don't sell out in the first hour again. And then the theme for the extreme decorating competition is what this year? Uh, a fairy tale happily ever after. So um, it's their interpretation of that. Every baker you know, is creative and as long as whatever they create can support that theme and stay within the guidelines um, that the judges develop, then um, they'll be good competitors. All right, and Cakeapalooza is this Saturday at the Quincy Mall, and what is the time again? Noon to four, and the live competition is one to three. All right, well, we are meeting, we've been meeting with some competitors all morning from Crazy Cakes. They are going to be in the live competition. You are competing against your coworker. Yes. What do you have to say to her? Um, nothing really. I mean, I know I'm going to win with my other cake decorator because we've done this, you know, for almost 365 days in the last year and even years before that. So, the fact that they haven't been able to do actually one cake that we've sold doesn't really give them a standing chance. So good Ooh, luck with that. I sense a little bit of sarcasm. Amber actually yeah. competed last year and took second place. Now we have Jill, who is a first-time competitor this year. What do you have to say to Amber's response to? Well, I'll just tell her that I'll have a case of Kleenex for her <laughs> when we win the competition and we show the cake decorators at Crazy Cakes that not only can we run the business, but we can decorate those cakes just as well as they can, if oh, not better. Sounds like a challenge to me. Now, to see who wins one of the, from the cake decorating competition, make sure you check out Cakeapalooza this Saturday at the Quincy Mall. Those are fighting words, I think.